Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Pale Blue Thoughts. Today we will talk about the beginning of everything. Everything that we know of about the beginning of everything we know. We all know that space and time came into existence at the Big Bang. We have discussed a bit about space in our earlier episodes, but we haven't really had the time to discuss about time. So today we will discuss the time when everything was a dense cloud of matter called singularity and the time when it decided to go bang bang. What happened in time as soon as the universe was born? It is an interesting topic and hence please spare some time to listen to this from start to end. So without wasting any more time, let's go. The universe is ready to expand. The Big Bang Theory is the prevailing cosmological model explaining the existence of the observable universe from the earliest known periods through its subsequent large-scale evolution. The model describes how the universe expanded from an initial state of high density and temperature and offers a comprehensive explanation for a broad range of observable phenomena including the abundance of light elements, the cosmic microwave background radiation and its huge expanse. It was proposed by a Belgian priest scholar named Georges Lemaitre in the 1920s. So what is the Big Bang? The model suggests that at one point everything in this universe was concentrated as a dense cloud. Don't ask me when and where because those questions are immaterial as there was no space-time and properties such as space and time just didn't exist. That point is called as gravitational singularity or space-time singularity or just singularity. It was a condition in which gravity was so intense that space-time itself breaks down catastrophically when we try to study it. All our currently known laws of physics including the quantum mechanics and general theory of relativity simply breaks down at that point. We don't know when it was or where it was or how long it was there for. But what we know is that at some point the couch potato called singularity got so bored sitting idle that it started to expand. That expansion is called as Big Bang. It was not an explosion but rather an accelerated expansion. This we know happened around 13 point billion years ago and this can be considered the birth of the universe and the beginning of time as we know it. The term itself is misleading as it implies an explosion. However, an explosion implies expansion from a central point onto the surrounding space which did not yet exist. Rather than expanding into space, the Big Bang was the expansion or stretching of space itself which is a much harder concept to grasp. Another issue is that bang implies sound which would require a vibrating particle and medium through which it travels. Since this is the beginning of anything we can imagine, there is no basis for any sound and thus the Big Bang was likely silent. As theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking notes in his 1988 book A Brief History of Time, even if time did not begin with the Big Bang and if there was another time frame before it, no information is available to us from that earlier time frame and any events that occurred then would have no effect on our present time frame. Any assumed events from before the Big Bang can therefore be considered effectively meaningless. As with anything in science, what we don't know, we don't know until we find out about it. Science would never fill a gap with something which has no evidence. So we can safely assume an agnostic position on singularity and say we don't know. People who claim to think they know, you are welcome to bring in with proper evidence. Now let me take you back into time to when the couch potato of a universe started to expand. The Big Bang Theory isn't about the bang itself but about what happened after the bang. By doing a lot of math and watching carefully what goes on in particle accelerators, scientists believe they can look back into 10 raised to minus 43 seconds after the universe came into existence, when the universe was probably so small that we may have needed a microscope to look at it. We can model this process remarkably closely at least until the very early nanoseconds or less and physicists have been able to piece together major events in the evolution of the universe beginning with the tiniest fractions of a second after the Big Bang. 
people who ridicule the Big Bang, the creationists, often fail to understand how much we know of the Big Bang. What we don't know and can't measure is the time before the first 5.39 into 10 raised to minus 44 seconds. This is called the Planck Epoch. We don't know anything about this or anything earlier. And we have no way of knowing until our knowledge of physics improves. Any event or events occurring within this time, 5.39 into 10 raised to minus 44 seconds, must necessarily remain pure speculation. Why? Because the temperature at that time would have been 10 raised to 32 degrees Celsius. That is 10 followed by 32 zeros. It must have been so hot that even the very concept of a particle breaks down in those conditions. Even if we know nothing about the Planck epoch, remember this is only an extremely, extremely, extremely small amount of time which is missing from our record books. 1 divided by a number having 45 zeros. You do the math. The rest of the bang has been recorded as follows. The grand unification epoch which is 10 raised to minus 43 to 10 raised to minus 36 seconds. The force of gravity separates from the other fundamental forces and the first elementary particles are created. Then comes the inflationary epoch which is 10 raised to minus 36 to 10 raised to minus 32 seconds. The universe undergoes an extremely rapid exponential expansion known as cosmic inflation and any existing particles become very thinly distributed. Now here the universe took a break from inflating itself and started to settle down, so to speak. During the electroweak epoch of 10 raised to minus 36 to 10 raised to minus 12 seconds, the strong nuclear force separates from the other two forces which are electromagnetism and gravity and particle interactions create large number of exotic particles including W and Z bosons and the Higgs boson. This is something that we have been able to achieve using particle accelerators such as the Large Hadron Collider. The quark epoch, 10 raised to minus 12 to 10 raised to minus 6 seconds, the four fundamental forces assume their present forms. And quarks, electrons and neutrinos form in large numbers as the universe cools off to below 10 quadrillion degrees. The Hadron epoch, 10 raised to minus 6 seconds to 1 second, the universe cools to form about a trillion degrees, allowing quarks to combine to form hadrons like protons and neutrons and electrons colliding with protons fuse to form neutrons and give off massless neutrinos. Now the universe is one second old. The next 10 seconds is called as the lepton epoch, that is the first 1 to 10 seconds, where most but not all hadrons and anti-hadrons annihilate each other and leptons such as electrons and positrons dominate the mass of the universe. In less than a minute, the universe is a million billion miles across and growing fast. Nucleosynthesis which is 3 minutes to 20 minutes. Now the temperature of the universe falls to about 10 billion degrees so that atomic nuclei can begin to form as protons and neutrons fuse to form the nuclei of the simplest elements of hydrogen, helium and a little bit of lithium. In 3 minutes, 98% of all matter there is and will ever will be has been produced. We now have a beautiful universe and all it took for it was the time that you would take to make a sandwich. The photon epoch which is 10 seconds to about 2,40,000 years where the nuclei is filled with plasma a hot opaque soup of atomic nuclei and electrons and the energy of the universe is dominated by photons which continue to interact frequently with the charged protons, electrons and nuclei. Recombination or decoupling about 240,000 to 300,000 years, the temperature of the universe falls to around 3000 degrees and ionized hydrogen and helium atoms capture electrons neutralizing their electric charge and binding from within atoms. The universe finally becomes transparent to light, making this the earliest epoch potentially observable today. Next is the dark age or era, about 300,000 to 150 million years. The universe is literally dark with no stars having formed to give off light and all activity tails off dramatically with the universe dominated 
by a mysterious dark matter. And around 300 to 500 million years after that, the universe said, let there be light and there was light. Small dense clouds of cosmic gas start to collapse under their own gravity until they start to trigger nuclear fusion reactions between hydrogen atoms and create the very first stars. The universe saw that light was good and thus passed a few more billion years. And then universe said, let there be a difference between stars and planets. Universe made the vault and thus galaxies were formed. Galaxies as you know are a group of a lot of stars and planets and many other things. Our own solar system was formed 8.5 to 9 billion years after the Big Bang. Our sun, a late generation star incorporating the debris from the generations of earlier stars and the solar system around it formed roughly 4.5 to 5 billion years ago. And since then, there has been billions of mornings and evenings in the solar system. For those people who may be interested in a concise calendar of events following the Big Bang, I had done a special episode called the Cosmic Calendar as my 100th episode and you can find the link here. It shows the timeline from the beginning of the universe till the present. Okay, coming back to Big Bang. Ever since it was formed, the poor universe hasn't been able to rest for a day like some fortunate sky daddies. It has been expanding ever since. Every single day and night for billions of years. The universe is expanding and all the galaxies are moving further and further away from each other. In fact, we now know that this expansion is accelerating faster and faster and the farther something is away from us, the faster is it receding away from us. This is explained by what is called as Hubble's law. For example, if you are sitting in Madhya Pradesh, Kashmir would be moving faster away from you than Delhi, just like Sri Lanka and China and the Middle East goes away from you faster when compared to Bangalore, Assam and Mumbai. The acceleration is in all directions. Hubble's law is considered the first observational basis for the expansion of the universe and today it serves as one of the pieces of evidence most often quoted in support of the Big Bang. The complete details of Hubble's law is a topic for another video, so I will skip it here. The next piece of evidence is something you can see for yourself. All you need is a television set to prove this. Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation In 1964, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson discovered the cosmic background radiation, an omnidirectional signal in the microwave band by accident. They were trying to make use of a large communication antenna owned by Bell Laboratories when they were troubled by a persistent background noise. It seemed to come from all points of the sky, every single day and night and this continued for over a year. The young astronomers did everything they could think of to track down and eliminate the noise. They fixed all electrical circuits, used duct tape across every seam and rivet and also used brushes to clean the dish of bird poop. Nothing they tried worked. Meanwhile, unknown to them, a team of scientists led by Robert Dick was working on how to find the very thing that Penzias and Wilson were trying to get rid of. They were pursuing an idea proposed by the famous astrophysicist named George Gamow that if you look deep into space, you would find some cosmic background radiation left over from the Big Bang. He had also predicted that it would arrive at Earth in the form of microwaves. The noise that Penzias and Wilson were hearing was of course the noise that Gamow had postulated. They were seeing the first photons that arose out of the Big Bang and they were witnessing the edge of the universe 90 billion trillion miles away. Even today you can see it. Tune into any television channel which has noise and 1% of the noise is actually remnants of the Big Bang. All the 80s and 90s kids like me who grew up watching good old Doordarshan, we are the lucky ones who got to watch the middle episodes from the beginning of the universe serial, although we didn't realize it at that time at all. We have in fact sent three satellites into space to study this cosmic radiation. The Kobe, the WMAP and the Planck. Now how do we know all this? Most of what we know or believe we know about the early moments of the universe is thanks to an idea called inflation theory which was laid down in 1979 by a particle physicist named Alan Guth. This theory explains the ripples and eddies that makes our universe possible. Without those, 
there would be no clumps of matter and thus no stars just drifting gas and everlasting darkness would have been there there are more evidences which support the theory such as the abundance of primordial elements and distribution of galaxies which support this model and makes this a formidable theory but we don't have the time and space to discuss that today but advancements in science has made us understand how the universe began up until 10 raised to minus 43 seconds after it started to expand that in itself is a huge achievement as science continues to develop we may one day find an answer to what was there before the planck epoch we are just waiting for the next time's time to come along and explain it to us so i hope you enjoyed this episode of how our universe came about and you learned something new today please do comment and let me know if you want to hear more scientific facts about everyday things please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and select all so that you would be notified when i release new videos people who are watching the channel for the first time please head over to the video section where you will find hundreds more informative videos my time is up for today i will see you soon with yet another interesting episode until then it's bye bye from pale blue thoughts